Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from Leak Code called Minimum Bit Flips to Convert Number. It's an easy, what is it asking? A bit flip of a number x is choosing a bit in the binary representation of x and flipping it from either 0 to 1 or 1 to 0. For example, for x equals 7, the binary representation is 1, 1, 1. And we know that, right? If we look at the positions of the 1s, 2 to the 0 is going to be 1. 2 to the 1 is going to be 2. And 2 to the 2 is going to be 4. So summing all this together will give us 7. So 1, 1, 1 will give us 7. And we may choose any bit, including any leading zeros not shown, and flip it. We can flip the first bit from the right to get 1, 1, 0. So in this example, if we were to flip the rightmost bit, we would change that from a 1 to a 0 to get 1, 1, 0. We could also flip the second bit from the right to get 1, 0, 1. Or we could flip the fifth bit from the right, the leading zero, to get 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. So of course, by default, this has a bunch of zeros in the beginning. And we could choose the fifth bit to flip to get 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. Given two integers start and goal, return the minimum number of bit flips to convert start to goal. Example one, start is 10 and goal is seven. So the binary representation of both 10 and seven, that is going to be the following right over here. We're given it one, zero, one, zero, and zero, one, one, one. Now, if we wanna convert start into goal, we wanna convert one, zero, one, zero into zero, one, one. So how many bit flips does that require, right? We want to convert this bit over here. So that's going to be one bit flip. We want to convert this one over here, 0 into 1, so that's 2. And finally, this one over here, 1 to 0, so that's 3 bit flips in total. So that is going to be our output. Example 2, we start with 3 and our goal is 4, so representing 3 and 4 in binary. 3 in binary is going to be 0, 0, 1, 1, and 4 is going to be 0, 1, 0, 0. So how many bits are differing here? That's going to be 3 again, right? This one over here, 1 to 0, then again 1 to 0, and then 0 to 1. So we output 3. So we're given a start and we want to determine how many bit flips are required to convert start into our goal. This is the same as just checking how many bits differ between start and goal. So what we could do is just iterate through the bits in both start and goal, see which bits are different, and add that to a running total sum of the number of flips required. So to code this up, what would that look like? We want to initialize our flips to be zero. Now we want to iterate through either goal or start is in binary. We can't loop through. We want to be shifting in order to get our next bit. So what that looks like is doing while goal or start while they are not zero. We want to get the rightmost bit of both goal and start. So the goal bit will be achieved by doing goal, ending this with one and same with start. The start bit, the rightmost bit for start is going to be start ended with one. Now, what does and one do? This is the identity operation. Say for our example, we have start being seven and our goal being 10. So these are the bitwise representations of seven and 10. We wanna get the rightmost bit for both start and goal. If we were to and this number over here with a one, what's going to happen, right? We're just going to get this rightmost bit because anything ended with one is going to be one. So whatever we have in this position is what we're going to get. And since everything over here is zero, this is all going to zero out. In order for an and to be one, both bits have to be one. Now, since this is zeroed out, it doesn't matter what we have in here. This is always going to be zero past this right bit. So our S bit is going to be one. Now, what about goal? And in goal with one, we're going to get zero, zero, zero. And now we just want to see what we have in this place. It's going to be a zero because zero ended with one is going to be zero. So we have zero for our G bit and one for our S bit. Now, since these are different, we know we need to do a flip. So if g bit does not equal our s bit, we're gonna do flips plus equals one. So, so far we had to make one flip. Now that we've gotten the rightmost bit, we want to right shift both goal and start. So goal is going to be right shifted by one and same for start, start equals itself shifted by one. And if this is new to you, all this means is we are shifting it to the right. So if start with 0, 1, 1, 1, we just shift it over by 1, cutting off that rightmost bit. So we get a new bit in our rightmost position. And same for goal, we just move it to the right and truncate it. So we get a new bit in our rightmost position. So going back in our while loop, we check while goal. This is true. It still is greater than 0. We find out our g bit and our s bit. So our g bit is going to be 1. We have a 1 in the rightmost bit. And our s bit is also going to be 1. Now they are equal to each other, so we don't need to increment flip. All we need to do is right shift again. So moving start down and same for goal. 
We go back in our while loop. This is still true. We get our right bits. So over here, our S bit is one and our G bit is zero. So these are different, which means we need another flip. So flip is going to go up to two. Now we right shift again. So goal is going to move down and so will start. Going back in this while loop, we make a check while goal. This is true. It's still greater than zero. So even though start has zeroed out, we need one of them to be non-zero. So we can go in this while loop, which we can. We get the rightmost bit. So our G bit is going to be one and our S bit is going to be zero. They are not equal. So we increase our flips. We right shift again. So start is going to stay zero and goal is now going to become zero. So we can no longer go in this while loop. And all we want to do now is just return the flips. So we return flips. And if we remember what our original numbers were, right? There were seven and 10. So in binary, that would be zero, one, 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 and one, zero, one, zero. We can see that this is true, right? These bits differ over here, that first position. The second position is the same, so that's okay. Then there is a one here, but a zero here. So that's our second flip. And then we have a third flip for this one over here, zero to one. So this is three flips. So let's go ahead and submit this. And it is accepted. Now, another way to solve this would be through the use of our binary operators. So going back to our truth table, right? We have the following truth table. We have an X bit and a Y bit. What are our operators? We have the OR and, and the XOR. So when are they going to be one and zero? Well, for an OR to be one, either X or Y has to be a one. So it's going to be one every single time, unless both are zero. And AND is only going to be a one when both X and Y are one, else it's going to be a zero. And an XOR will only be a one when the OR is a one and the AND is a zero. So over here is going to be a one and over here it's going to be a one. Essentially, it's only going to be a one when the bits of X and Y differ. So instead of checking whether or not they're equal, we can just use the XOR to add to our flips. So what we can do is while goal or start, we get our bits. And what we're going to do is just add two flips. So flips plus equals the XOR of G bit plus S bit. So G bit XOR with S bit. This is only going to be one if these two bits are different. So they're not equal to each other. We add one. Otherwise, we're going to be adding zero. So it could work like this. And if we were to submit this, this would also work. Or we could just XOR these two numbers from the get go. So what we could do is have an XOR being start XOR with our goal. So again, if start was seven and goal was 10, these are the binary representations. What is start XOR with goal? Well, that's going to be one, one, zero, one. Anytime the bits are different, we're going to have a one. Anytime they are the same, it's going to be zero. So now what we can do is just loop through the XOR value. So while XOR, we're going to get the rightmost bit. So we're going to do X bit being XOR ended with one. And we just want to add that to our flips so we can get rid of this and directly actually add this to flips. So flips plus equals what we have in that rightmost bit, whether it's a zero or one. And then all we need to do is right shift our XOR. So XOR right shift equal one. So in this example, what would that look like? Our flips would be zero. Our XOR would be start XOR with goal. So one, one, zero, one. While XOR, this is true. We add to flips XOR ended with one. So what is the rightmost bit here? That's a one. So we're going to add that to flips. We right shift this down. We go back in this while loop, get the rightmost bit. It's a zero. So adding that to flips, we'll keep it a one. We right shift again. We come across a one. So we add that to flips right shift, go back in this while loop. The rightmost bit is a one. So we add that to flips and right shift again. And now we are zero. So we exit and we just return flips, which is three. So if we were to submit this, it would be accepted as well. And it's a much more concise way of writing out all that code. Now there is one more optimization we can make still. Say we had the following start and goal, whatever this number would represent. These would be the binary representation. Say we are working with this. Now, what would the extra of this be? Well, that would be one, zero, zero, one, zero, 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 one, zero, zero, right? These are differing bits here, here, and here. And what we're doing is just iterating through bit by bit. If we come across a set bit, a one bit, we're just adding that to our flips count. Instead, what if we subtracted one from our XOR? So XOR minus one, what does this equal? This equals one, zero, zero, one, zero, 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 one, one. Right. If we were to add a one back to this number, what would we get? We get one plus one, which is two. So in binary, that would be one zero since it's two digits. The one would carry and the zero would go down here. And now we have to do one plus one, which is again one zero. So we carry the one right the zero here. And now we would do one plus zero, which just would be one. 
and the rest of these would stay as is because we're just adding zero to the rest of this. And we can see that we get the same number we had in XOR, right? So this is XOR minus one. So if we add one to this, we get our original XOR. XOR minus one, all it did was reverse these three bits over here. So if we add one to it, it carries through and gets us our original XOR. Now, if you notice, once we did XOR minus one, what happened? These bits from that first one that we saw and afterwards have been flipped. So now if we were to AND with XOR minus one, what would we get? We would get one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, zero. And now all of these bits have been flipped. They don't equal each other. So the AND is going to be zero, which means this is now all zeros. We essentially got rid of that set bit in XOR once we ANDed it with XOR minus one. Now if we do the same thing again over here, if we set this new number to be XOR now, do XOR minus one again, we would get one, zero, 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 one, 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 one. And ending this together, what would that be? That would be one, zero, 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 all the way through. So we basically got rid of the next set bit we had, the next one we had, right? And every time we go in this loop, we are getting rid of whatever bit we have that is a one next in our XOR. So every time we go in this loop, we can just increment flips right away. And this way, we don't need to go through every single bit. We are just going to go in our loop for the number of ones we have in our XOR. So how would that look like coded up? Flips would be initialized to zero. XOR would be start XOR with goal. While XOR, all we want to do is set XOR to be XOR anded with XOR minus one. And we're just going to increase flips by one. So flips plus equals one. And that's it. We would just have to return flips in the end, right? So the first time we run this, say this was our start, this was our goal. We had this XOR. We set XOR to be XOR anded with XOR minus one. So this would be our new XOR. We increase flips by one. So that would go to one. We, we just got rid of this one bit we had in XOR where the bits in our original start and goal were differing. So we know we have one flip we need to do. Now we go back in this while loop. This is our new XOR. We set XOR to be XOR anded with XOR minus one. So this is going to be our new XOR over here. We increase flips again. So this is going to go to two. We go back in this while loop. This is still true. It's not zero. So we're going to do the same thing again. What is XOR minus one? That is going to be zero, one, 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 one. If we and these two together, what happens, right? This whole thing zeros out. So now it's just going to be all zeros. We're getting rid of this bit over here. And now that we have a new XOR, we want to increase flips as well. So it's going to go to three and we go back in this while loop, but we can't anymore. Our new XOR is all zero. So we just return flips and we didn't have to go in this loop for the number of bits that we had. We only went in this loop three times for all the set bits that we had in our XOR. So let's go ahead and submit this and it is accepted as well. So we just went ahead and solved the minimum bit flips to convert number in multiple ways. If you have any questions with any of our approaches, comment down below, I'll answer all of them. If this video was helpful, like, comment, share, and subscribe. It really supports the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next one.